Welcome to episode number 45. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. In this week's episode, I expose the hateful propaganda that sits at the heart of the newly released Bollywood film, The Kashmir Files. But first, a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now let's get into it. The Kashmir Files was released in cinemas throughout India and the rest of the world on Saturday. It claims to tell the story of the exodus of Hindus from the disputed territory during the 1990s. In reality, however, this so-called exodus was an evacuation, orchestrated by the Indian government. But an evacuation Hindu nationalists mischievously label a genocide today, to incite hatred against Muslims in Kashmir and Pakistan. Look, I watched the movie on Sunday, and I'm here to tell you this. This is a propaganda film that would have made Hitler's propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels beam with pride, like he did here during the showing of his own propaganda film at the height of Nazi rule, as portrayed amusingly in The Inglorious Bastards. Play the clip. Fabelhaft, mein Lieber, fabelhaft. Das ist der beste Film bisher. You see, Hitler tasked Goebbels with the job of producing Nazi propaganda to serve multiple aims. To promote German nationalism, the goals of the Nazi party and the party itself, while also demonizing the Jewish people. To that end, the Kashmir Files does exactly that, but for Hindu nationalism and India's ruling party, while laying fictitious claims to Kashmir where Muslims represent an overwhelming majority of the population. In short, this is a film that could have only been written under the consultation from the world's largest terrorist organization, the RSS, a Hindu nationalist paramilitary outfit that has long disseminated propaganda about Hindus in Kashmir, with the aim of denying the indigenous population, Muslims, a right to determine their own future, a right that was promised to them by the United Nations seven decades ago. In a moment, I will show you some clips, but here's what you need to know. Muslims are presented as bloodthirsty rapists and murderers. Roll it. Never been an integral part of India, and this is a historical fact. Me, Kashmir! Ralev Karan Chela! Abna dharam badlu, bhaagho, kya mar jao! Kashmir ke masle ka ek hi hal! Hal On the flip side, however, Hindus are portrayed as hapless and defenseless victims who shun violence. Play. The film has a simple message. Kashmiri Muslims committed genocide against Kashmiri Hindus. Go. Unsurprisingly, the film is invoking a genocidal response against Muslims from Hindu moviegoers across India. Watch. मैं अपने सभी हिंदू भाइयों से कहना चाहता हूं कि वो सतर्क हो जाएं और ये इनसे दूरी बनाए रखें नहीं तो ये हान आने वाला हमारे लिए कल है आप अभी भी टाइम है सतर्क हो जाइए नहीं तो ये कभी भी वार कर सकते हैं But anybody who tries to convince you a Hindu genocide took place in Kashmir is straight up lying to your face and for sinister political motives You see the United Nations provides an unambiguous definition of genocide in describing it as acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part an ethnic, racial or religious group. But nobody, not Kashmiri Muslims, not the government in Kashmir, nor Pakistan, not anybody for that matter, has ever intended to destroy in whole or in part Kashmiri Hindus, who represented 5% of the territory's roughly 10 million people in the 1990s. I mean, let's be clear. If a majority population of roughly 9 million people really wanted to harm a minority population of just 500,000, then this would indeed translate to genocide level mass killings. But that's not what happened in Kashmir during the 1990s or ever. But don't take my word for it. I mean, even the Indian government produced a report saying that fewer than 220 Hindus have been killed in Kashmir since 1989. 
Then there's the Srinagar District Police Headquarters, which found only 89 Kashmir Hindus have been killed during the 1990s. And then there's the Human Rights Commission, which found that of 157 people killed during the early 1990s, 120 of them were Muslim and only 37 were Hindu. But the point is this, that while every death is a tragedy, the political motivated killing of 37, 89 or 219 individuals over three decades does not a genocide make. Because if 37, 89 or even 219 dead Hindus equals a genocide, then what name do you give to the 100,000 Kashmiri Muslims who have been killed by Indian occupation forces since 1989? I'll tell you what you call it. You call that a genocide, especially given the Indian government has made no secret of its intent to eradicate Kashmir's Muslim population in whole or in part. And furthermore, this is a genocide that remains ongoing today, with the Indian government recently stripping Kashmir of its semi-autonomous status to put Kashmiri Muslims under the direct rule of a Nazi party-inspired Hindu fascist government, which carries out an array of human rights violations, including forced disappearances, arbitrary detentions, torture, extrajudicial murders, use of human shields, and more. And genocide is a name you give to the thousands of unmarked graves that contain the remains of unidentified young Kashmiri Muslim men and boys. Watch. That once used to define the sorrow and the loss of Kashmir's most volatile years. A mother, a wife, a sister, clutching a faded photograph of a man they loved, sometimes the only photograph they possessed. Asking just one question, when will he be back home? Will he ever be back home again? Look, nobody is denying the early 1990s were violent and tumultuous times in Kashmir for both Hindus and Muslims. But both Hindu and Muslim political leaders, politicians, police activists and journalists were targeted for assassination during this period. And more to the point, this violence was never about Kashmiri Muslims versus Kashmiri Hindus. It was about hatred towards Indian colonial rule. It was about injustices that flowed directly from Indian military occupation which is exactly what the producers of the Kashmir Files deliberately keep hidden from you. Instead, they pretend the militancy in Kashmir flows from so-called radical Islamic terrorism, which was why Muslims are portrayed in the film as bloodthirsty jihadists and rapists. Worse, the film aims to legitimize Indian military violence against Kashmiri Muslims, which is why the Indian government is so enthusiastically supporting the film by sponsoring advertisements for it around the world because it knows that if it can get American audiences to believe Hindus are the victims of radical Islamic terrorism, then it can silence US opposition to its Hindu settler colonial enterprise in Kashmir. A lesson the Modi regime has learnt well from Israel. You see, what India doesn't want you to know is that Muslims and Hindus have lived side by side as brothers and sisters for centuries in Kashmir. The same way Muslims and Christians coexist peacefully and united against Israeli occupation in the Palestinian territories. Tensions arose between Hindus and Muslims in Kashmir in the late 1980s only because RSS and then later its political wing, BJP, came along to weaponize communal divisions. Here's how Kashmiri Muslims really feel about the Hindu brothers. Go. My name is uh, Mujtaba Rizvi. I'm an artist and a cultural entrepreneur based in Kashmir. Uh, about the return of our Pandit brothers uh, to Kashmir, uh, one thing I know for a fact is that whether it's me or my friends or, you know, the people I interact with on an everyday basis, uh, there's no doubt that that we would want them to be back here uh, amongst ourselves, you know, uh, because they belong to this place. The movie's producers also want you to totally ignore this fundamental fact, that this so-called Hindu exodus took place under a governor who was appointed by the central government, which was supported by, you guessed it, BJP. This governor evacuated Hindus from Kashmir as part of a concerted effort to clear them out of the valley so that the Indian military could freely turn its weapons against the Muslim population without harming Hindus. Which is exactly what happened the day after Hindus were evacuated from the valley aboard government buses in 1990. And Kashmiri Muslims have been the subject of these atrocities at the hands of Indian soldiers for three consecutive decades. Why? Because India has never concealed its intent to ethnically cleanse Kashmir of its Muslim majority population. Not then, and not today. And the Kashmir Files is produced with that objective in mind. So ladies and gentlemen, there's your genocide. It's not against Hindus, it's against Kashmiri Muslims. Anyway, that's all the time I have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word of your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.